In this video, I will show you how you can use an aggregate demand and aggregate supply model to determine what the central bank should do to stabilize the economy. Let us start with the following aggregate demand and aggregate supply model. So we have a graph here and we have the price level on the vertical axis and real GDP on the horizontal axis. Let's now assume we have a first year. We have our long run aggregate supply curve here and this is for the first year. Then we have an aggregate demand and short run aggregate supply and we have an equilibrium price level and output level in the first period. Let's assume we are at equilibrium. That means we have all three lines intersecting at the same point. So we are at potential, which is captured by long run aggregate supply, which means we are also at full employment. Let's now assume we have a second year. In this second year, potential GDP or the long run aggregate supply curve shifts to the right. And we have a situation where you have the long run aggregate supply curve two, which will lead to a new potential output level of Y2. At the same time, let's assume the short run aggregate supply and aggregate demand also both shift to the right. However, they don't shift all the way to the top of this new long run aggregate supply curve. So we get a new aggregate demand curve and we get a new short run aggregate supply curve here, which will lead to a new equilibrium Y2 bar with a new price level P2 here. Now, in this model, if we let the economy do whatever it does, what will happen is the short run aggregate supply curve will shift because we are currently below this potential. Our potential is Y2 here, but we are only at Y2 bar. Because we are below potential, we have higher unemployment than we would normally have. And so there is a lot of people that would like to take jobs but can't get a job today. So firms are able to lower their wages and thus hire more people at cheaper wages, which will increase output and we will get back slowly to the equilibrium, which will be down here on the long run aggregate supply curve. Now the problem with this approach is that this can take quite some time. The central bank can speed this up. If the central bank acts fast enough, it can see, oh, we will be below potential. So unemployment will, will be above the natural rate of unemployment. So what the central bank can do is it can boost the economy to a so-called expansionary policy to shift the economy back to potential. Now, how does this work? Well, first, the central bank would lower the interest rate, which means increase the money supply by buying bonds. If the central bank buys bonds, that means that it will give cash, newly printed cash, in return for other people's bonds. That means the money supply will be expanding. At the same time, the interest rate will go down. And because the interest rate goes down, firms can borrow at lower interest rates. And through borrowing at lower interest rates, firms have a higher incentive to invest in this economy. As firms invest more in this economy, they will shift aggregate demand to the right. And let's call this new aggregate demand AD bar three. And we will end up at this equilibrium up here, which will 
have higher prices than the initial state, but the same output level in year two. So let's quickly recap. Assume that we have an economy that shifts from being at potential to going below potential. If the central bank knows that, it can do an expansionary policy, which will then shift aggregate demand to the right, which will cause the economy to go back to potential. Thank you for watching.